I want to explain to you how to use this in a little more detail than it's there. I mean, it's nice to look at it in print, but I want to show you. Saw me do it earlier. I'm going to do it one more time. We're taping this so that you can refer back to it and you can actually get your people as you're training them, you can have them do it as well. The reason I start with the rule of 72, because number one, the rule of 72 is kind of, I think, the, the fundamental thing of our business. And when I first started the business, it was the most exciting thing. You can't see it very well. It's not focused, okay? One of the most exciting things about this was that to, when I saw it myself as a client, when they showed me the rule of 72, because I didn't know what this was. I used to be in the retail jewelry business, so I never knew what the heck anything had to do with money. I had an IRA. The IRAs that I had were in uh, annuities with uh, Jackson National with a surrender charge of like, uh, it was ridiculous. I don't forgot what it was, but it was something like 30 some percent was a surrender charge for the first th five years. It was just outrageous, okay? And so uh, that was my investment when I first started in the business. And when they showed me the rule of 72 and I saw what a mutual fund could do and what they were doing versus what you know a bank account or a fi any kind of fixed rate savings vehicle, it really, to me, got me to see how important it was to be do doing that. And also, it was a no brainer when I saw this, I said, I could do this. See, to me, I saw, you mean, you help people move their money from, from low rates return vehicles to higher rates return vehicles. You help them put hundreds of thousands of dollars, extra dollars in their pocket. Who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, that was my, the way I processed the information when I saw it. That's why I think this is important, not to mention you want to disturb them if they're right now currently saving in low rates of return, like passbook savings account. A lot of people have their savings in their checking accounts, interest rate sensitive checking accounts that are paying 2%. A lot of people do. A lot of people have money in, in, in CDs, right? or even in bonds when they shouldn't be in bonds. I mean, even people that are in their 60s should be, have a portion of their assets invested in equities. There's no, not, you shouldn't have 100% of your money in, in, in safe. Safe is, is, is tad amount to making sure you lose, okay, long range. And we're in a market right now that's exploding. It's gonna continue to explode over the next, and if you don't understand the market, one of the things you need to read and where we're at in our business, and you should read, is uh, Harry Dent Jr.'s uh, the, the, uh, the Great Boom Ahead. Is that what it's called? Or the Roaring 2000s. See, that's his first book, okay? The Roaring 2000s, because that'll give you a clear understanding of why you should be invested right now, why you should be focused on that, okay? So let me just go over this. The key things I say, listen, they say, what do you do? I pull out my card. Who has a card handy with him right there? I pull out the card, and you can get these cards made up. We sent you the information. This is what I would carry around with me. I could carry them around with me every. Put them in your little daytime, or whatever. They say, they say, Hector. So what do you do? I say, well, like you got a couple minutes. Let me show you. And then you just pull it out. You say, let me. First thing we do. Have you ever heard of the rule of seventy-two? And they say, what? No, nobody has, right? Well, let me explain to you what this what this is, Lynn. If you take the number seventy-two, now this is exactly how to do it. So you take a pen. It should be a red pen, by the way. I apologize. This is blue, but I would use red because red. You can't miss red. So you want it, the reason you want to use red, I, I would use these little, they're uh, flare, little felt tip uh, uh, pens, okay? They're felt tip. So I'd buy a box of those because every time you do a presentation, I believe you should do it in red because people have to pay attention because it stands out from every other part of the, of the paper, all right? So if you, as I'm doing this, notice how when I write, your eyes go directly to that place that I'm circling, right? How, what, are you, what is the thing you notice the most right there? 72, right? Okay. You say, Lynn, if you take 72 divided by your rate of return that equals your investment doubling period. For example, Lynn, if you had a $10,000 one-time investment, your doubling period at 6%, if that was your rate of return, you take 6 into 72, that gives us what? 12. And you shut up and wait for the answer. Okay. As soon as you ask the question, be quiet, let him answer. He says 12, because if he says it, it's true. If you say it, it's doubtful, okay? That's the reason you ask the question. So then that means then at 12%, at 6%, Lynn, our 10,000 is going to double in value every 12 years approximately, right? So that's 20, that's 40, that's 80,000. If you'd never touched the money, Lynn, in, in, in 36 years, your 10 grand at 6% would go to approximately 80,000. You with me? Okay, I asked, are you with me? He says, yes. I didn't say, do you understand? 
Because if you say, do you understand, you're saying he's dumb. Okay, I didn't say that. I said, are you with me? Okay, subtle, but very important. Okay, you with me? He says, yeah. Okay, I say, what? Well, look, if we could get a 12% return, Lynn, 12 into 72 goes how many times, Lynn? Six. Okay, that's right. So then now we know our money's going to double approximately every six years, right? So that's 20, 40, 80, 160, 320. $640,000. Is that a big difference or a little difference? Huge difference, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And he says, yes. So then what's the difference then? If you subtract 80 from 640, what do we get? What's that? 560, right? Okay. I want him to add it up. I want him to do a little math. I want him to work with me, okay? Because I say now, this is the key to this thing right here. And this is where most of you mess up. This is why most of you struggle in your business. This is the reason most of you don't make a lot of money right here. This is the reason I make $3 million a year right here. Because I was never afraid to ask the commit for the commitment. This is where almost all of you, because you go, oh, they're going to think I'm pushy. They're going to think I'm trying to sell them something. You're going to think I'm, all of these ridiculous notions, what they're going to think is you're a total wimp, okay? And why would they want to do business with a wimp? and get involved with the wimp. That's what they're gonna think, right? So they say, I say, now Lynn, would, would you allow me to help you maximize your investment return? If, you, if, if I could help you get a better rate of return than you're currently receiving, would you allow me to sit down with you, give you a second opinion to help you maximize your current rate of return on, your, on the money that you're investing for whatever purpose, whether it be your children's college education, your retirement, or whatever reason. Would you allow me to at least give you a second opinion and help you with that? Okay, and I'm going to ask him, okay, and he's going to say, uh, virtually every time he's going to say yes. If he says, well, I don't know, right, I'm not sure. You're going to say, well, listen, if you were, if you were getting a 6% return and I could potentially, keyword, potentially show you how to get a better rate of return than you're currently go getting, can you explain to me why you wouldn't get together with me? And shut up and let him answer because he's not going to have an explanation. There's not one that makes any sense. He might say, I'm already doing that. I'm already with somebody. Have you ever heard that before? I'm already, I, then I'm going to say, have you ever got a second opinion? And he's going to say no. So I would say then, at that point, I'd say, Lynn, if you went to a doctor and he said, you know, Lynn, we're going to have to do surgery. We're going to have to take out your gallbladder. What, would you get a second opinion? Do you think it would be a, a, a prudent thing to do to get a second opinion before you made the commitment to have somebody cut you up and take something out of your body? Okay. So all I'm saying is for you to give me an option to give you a second opinion. If you're doing the correct things, you'll know for sure you are, and then you'll be, you can sleep well at night. And if you're not, you'd want to know about that anyways, wouldn't you? Okay, great. So can we, can, would you allow me to give you a second opinion then? No charge to do that. Fabulous. I See what I did there? I closed. I didn't say, okay, well, thanks anyways. I'll see you later. You see the difference? That little subtle thing right there that took an additional two or three minutes is why I make big money. It's the number one reason why I make big money. I'm telling you right now, most of you don't do that because you're more concerned about what they think about you than being successful. That's why most people in this country don't ever do very well. What will my parents think? What will my friends think? What will my wife think? What will my uncle think? What my, right? Everything. How about you? How about you? Are you important in the equation? As long as you're not hurting anybody, am I hurting him if I take him from 6 to 12%? So why should I be concerned about being direct and, and somewhat assertive in, in, in allowing him to help me. Why am I supposed to feel bad that I might help him? Does that make any sense to anybody in this room? See, it doesn't make any sense to me that you give up so easily and you quit on stuff so easily. If you're hurting them, of course, but we're not ever going to hurt people because one of the tenets of Primerica Financial Services is if we can't improve your current situation, we will not do business with you. We simply don't, right? So there's nothing wrong with being assertive, okay? Now, don't yell at them like I'm yelling at you, all right?
And then I say, there's one other thing we do, Lynn. Let me show you that. Are you interested in finding out the secret to financial freedom? And he's going to say what? You notice I'm asking questions that it's impossible unless you're a moron to say no. You can't say no to them. Okay, that's the key too, okay? I always ask questions that I know what the answer is before I ask them. I don't ever ask questions that I don't know the answer to. If you're an attorney and you're asking questions, you better know the answer before you ask the question or you're in big trouble, okay? Same thing, it's called the Socratic method, okay? It's what you do. So now look, I say, well, look, let me just show you one other thing. As a matter of fact, Lynn, this is the most exciting part of my business, to be honest with you. We make, we earn income one of four ways, okay? Either as an employee, Lynn, the, an employee has a job. This person income's based on their position, not the person. Now, I want to point out that's very important because I want to make him uncomfortable if he has a job. That's my goal here, okay? That's what I'm trying to do. So I say, Lynn, what do you do? And he says, He's a school teacher. Perfect. Okay. It wouldn't matter with almost any job. It works anyways. Okay. If he was, he, if it was Dave, Dave works in the medical field, right? If I was talking to, uh, you know, somebody else, Dennis, he's a mechanic or I don't care. It doesn't really matter. Right. If I talk to Gary McCrumman, he works for Vons. Okay. There, it doesn't work. It works the same. So I say, Lynn, let me, sh let me explain what I mean here. Cause this is important. If you're, you're I've, I imagine you're a really conscientious teacher, right? You work hard, you, you care about your students and all that, right? If you had a teacher in the classroom next to you that didn't care, showed up late, that didn't do, just, you know, you know how those, you even have any guys that work at your school like that, that just kind of do the bare minimum to get by, pick up, check. Now, if you have the same educational background and you have the same amount of tenure, you guys make about the same amount of money, right? Okay. So see, the problem with that is that you could be the absolute best and the person gets paid the position gets paid and not the person. That's one of the challenges with, uh, with being an employee, okay? Now, that's one way people make money. Another way people make money, Lynn, is they're self-employed. These people own a job. They would be like doctors, dentists, lawyers, attorneys, hairstyles, real estate agents. Now, these people, it's a little different because if you're, let's say you're a real estate agent, there are real estate agents that make a million bucks a year, right? And there are real estate agents that make $25,000 a year, okay? The real good ones, right, can make a lot of money. The ones that aren't so good can make less. It deep, it, in a self-employed scenario, the person could, it could make more than their peers if they're more professional. They're just better at their job. They have the potential to make more. So that's, that's a real positive part of being self-employed is it, that pays the person and not necessarily the position other than the industry, okay? The challenge is if you don't work, you don't get paid. That's a problem with being self-employed. In other words, if you're a real estate agent and you don't sell any houses for a month, you don't do anything, you won't make any money. That's a real problem with that, okay? If you're a broker, it's a little different, but if you're just an agent, it's, 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 that's how it works. Now, a business, people that make money from a, from a business lend, they own a system. Now, I want you to really fo focus on owning a system. That's the key, guys. The key. Folks, People can buy mutual funds, term insurance, they can get a loan, they can get uh, anything that we offer, any one of a hundred or thousand different places. We're not unique in the products we sell. That's not our uniqueness. You don't want to focus on the products. Those of you that focus on the products, you're self-employed. Business owners focus on the system, okay? Let me tell you why. Because the system's more important. And then I'll, and I'll explain what I mean. One of the things about being in business that's great, Lynn, is that these people have others working with them and for them, okay? So you could have 10 people or you could have 1,000 people. What that allows you to do is have the potential to have unlimited income, okay? It could be in any business, manufacturing, marketing, whatever. But let me just point out something that I think is real crucial here. In a business, the system is the most important thing because the system runs a business and people run the system, okay? And let me explain that. Why the system's the most critical part of a business. Are you familiar with McDonald's? Of course you are. Do you think, Lynn, you could probably put, make a better tasting hamburger than McDonald's if you tried? Yeah, absolutely, okay. I, everybody says yes. So think about this. McDonald's food isn't all that great, is it? Not only is it not good, it doesn't even taste good, okay? It's not good for you. 
But McDonald's is the number one restaurant chain in the whole world. They have 20-some thousand stores opening up who knows how many every year, okay? They sell more of every other product, every other food product than any other company in the, in the whole world. Now, is that because of the quality of their food, Lynn? No, of course it's not, right? It's because of their system. In fact, their system is so good, Lynn, that teenagers run. Have you noticed when you go into McDonald's, there's a bunch of kids in there running the store, right? It's that good. It's a multi-billion dollar business run essentially by teenagers. So when a person wants to buy a McDonald's franchise and they want to put down a million dollars of their own hard-earned money, right, their cash for a franchise, are they going, oh, I can't wait to cook some hamburgers and french fries? Is that what they're hoping to do? No. They're hoping to own a, a cash flow system. That's what they're buying. They're buying a cash flow system. They're not buying the chance to cook food. See, smart business people focus on the system, not the products. Always, okay? So would you agree with me that the system's more important than the product, Lynn? Okay, great. Now I want to ask him that because I want him to focus on that. So I say, the other place that people earn income, Lynn, is as an investor. These people, they have money working for them. They enjoy complete freedom, and essentially they live the dream. See, they have maybe have a couple million dollars set aside. They've got a couple hundred grand coming in every year, whether they work or not. If they want a vacation, you know, and travel Europe for two months, they, they can do that because they, they, they know there's cash going into their accounts every month, you know, and then maybe, they're, maybe they just have to call and check and make some, you know, choices on investment, or whatever, but it's real simple. They don't have to physically be anywhere. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want, with whomever they want. Of these four areas, Lynn, I know you're an employer right now. Which would you prefer to earn your income? In which way would you prefer to earn your income? Okay. So I write his name there, right? I said, so Lynn, you'd rather be an investor. There's What we do then is we show you two ways to get there. I can help you get there in one of two ways. Okay. One way is you can become a client of ours. And we can put together a financial needs analysis. It'll put have in there a, an investment strategy to allow you to get there and a debt, elimin debt elimination strategy to help you get rid of your debt so you can put more, you know, commit more money to investing, all right? This way, it's going to take somewhere between 20 to 40 years, depending on how aggressive you are and whatnot. Maybe less, you know, about that, okay? People that follow that path can get there. Another way you can do it is you can join me and my company. You can become self-employed. You can become a personal financial analyst. You can own a business, own, a, system, uh, own a, a job, and then we'll start teaching you how to develop your system within our system. Let me give you an example. I have a, let me give you an example of a few people that have done that in our company. And then I have this. If you don't have one of these with you all the time, you are double dumb, okay? What this is, it's our $100,000 club booklet, and it's really thick, okay? And it, what I would do is I would tab it to everybody that you know in the business, okay, like there's in my hierarchy, you're in my hierarchy, so you should tab it to all the people you know, starting with me, to Rick Susie, to Mark and Sue Younger, to Chris Howard, to Gary McCrumman, and on and on, okay? I'd have it tabbed out. So then I'd point out, I said, let me just share with you, these are people that owned our system. And I'd go, maybe I'll start right here. See this guy, this is Gary and Linda McCrumman. He, he was a grocery store manager with Vons. He was making $35,000 a year, Lynn. He started in our business part-time. And uh, now he's uh, worth about two and a half million dollars. And last year he made five hundred thousand. This year he's probably going to make about seven fifty. This guy right here, he lives right here in uh, Upland, California. This guy right here is Chris Howard. Uh, he used to be a, a electrician, making twenty five thousand dollars a year. He lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. He works with our organization, and he has a system uh, right now. He's at nine hundred thousand dollars and rolling twelve of income. He's going to go over a million dollars this year. This guy right here, this uh, is uh, this is Mark and Sue Younger. Mark and Sue Younger is also in our organization. He's in Sherman Oaks, California. He was a fellow express driver making $35,000 a year. Last 12 months, he was paid uh, $1.2 million. This guy right here is uh, Rick Susie. This is uh, Rick Susie. His name's, uh, he's, uh, he lives in Arcadia, California, and he was uh, in the retail jewelry business making $70,000 a year. In the last 12 months, he's made, been paid $1,400,000. And then this guy right here, this is uh, Hector and Jan Lamarck he used to be a real uh, uh, store uh, in the jewelry store making fifty thousand dollars a year. In the last twelve months, he's been paid three million dollars. Matter of fact, this is the guy I'm working with. So all these people, Lynn, started our system, okay? And what that allowed to them. So if they're making 
say two or three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. If you get your business to that point, let's say it's uh, five hundred, all right, just hypothetically, you could take you could probably live on one fifty, right? And that would leave you three fifty. Let's say you pay one hundred fifty in taxes, so that means you could put two hundred thousand dollars a year into investments. You could be, get to an, become an investor rather quickly. As a matter of fact, you could be an investor and a business owner simultaneously. Can you see that? Have all kinds of freedom. Have the best of both worlds. So, doing it that way, Lynn, takes twelve to fifteen years. So, you, all you need to tell me, Lynn, is how would you rather do it? Would you rather take twenty to forty or five to fifteen? Okay, so that if I can help you get there quickly, would you join me in my business? Is there any reason why you, you, you would not join me in my business? So we're in? Fantastic. This is what we need to do. Then you just get the stuff that, 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 that uh, you know, Daniel went over, and you get them started. Okay, first thing I need is a check for $199. Let's fill out your IBA. Let's do that. Now I need a list of 25. Let's do that. Let's boom, 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 and let's go to the races. The worst thing, this drives me out of my mind. So let me says, I sat on the guy, he's in, he's ready to go. And I say, okay, so did you get the IBA? He goes, well, no, I invited him up to the meeting Tuesday night. It's now Wednesday, right? And I'm going, oh, oh, oh what? What, you mean, why didn't you get it now? Well, he's going to come up, you know, the meeting. You mean to tell me if somebody said, I want to buy a life insurance policy, I'm ready to go, you would say, okay, why don't you, I'll see you next Wednesday. No, 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 no. You'd get the check right then, wouldn't you? Get it going now. See, that's another reason why most of you don't do well. You put it off. You need, a, if you're ready to go, let's go. Now, if he says, if I say, okay, this is what I need, he goes, whoa, 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 I'm not quite ready yet. Because he might balk. That's going to happen a lot. I guarantee you they're going to say, yeah, well, I'm in. I want to do a 5 to 15. Then you say, okay, I need to check for 1 to 9. They're going to go, whoa, right? I get, that's going to happen. So if he does that, he says, well, I'm not ready to give you a check. Then I say, well, you just told me you want to do it in 5 to 15 years, and that's, one of the, that's the first part of the process to do it in 5 to 15 years. And he says, well, you know, I want to, I want to think about it. And I say, well, listen, let me ask you a question. What exactly does my business have to have? What kind of features and benefits does it have to have, Lynn, for you to move forward and go ahead? So that if we do get together again or anything, right, I need to know what it's gonna take that, I'm gonna ha that it's gonna have to have so you can go ahead and, and make a decision to move forward. What does it have to have? And then shut up. And then he'll tell you what it is. And then what you should be computing in your mind is he's telling me what this is, I already know that I can fulfill any of those things. Oh, I want to make sure it's a good company. Well, that's a piece of cake. I want to, you know, make sure I can work my own hours. That's already, you know, everything he's going to say, I'm going to know I can fulfill that. So if he tells me a list of things, two or three things, and I say, Lynn, if I can prove to you right now that we can accomplish all those things, can we move forward tonight? Yes, okay, great. Then I'm going to do it. And then as soon as I do it, I'm getting a check for one and a, and we're moving forward. There's not come back next Tuesday or... You know what I'm saying? And you might be thinking, well, I don't know if I can do that. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Well, learn to get comfortable doing that because that's why you're broke right now. And you're laughing because you know it's true, right? See, if you learn how to ask for it, they'll give you. One of the things I found out, if you don't ask, the, the answer is 100% of the time no. You need to become a little more childlike because kids, have you noticed, anybody have kids here? They have no problem asking, and they'll ask you 49 different ways till Sunday, right? For whatever it is they want. I've got twenty and a 20-year-old and a 19-year-old, and they, they ask me daily for stuff, okay? Never stops. They just figure a different way. They're a little more sophisticated now than they were when they were kids, but they still ask, okay? And that's what you've got to get, okay? You've got to learn how to ask. And if they, if they stay balk, you must always ask, okay, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But what exactly does my business have to have? What features and benefits does it have to have for you to move forward and go ahead? Because I need to know what that is so I can prepare, right? So I can give him that stuff. Because if I give him what he wants, I expect what I want. You with me? Well, let me show you what I mean by that. And this is where I got this, this idea because I recently was in 
and this is what I always know because I've always done this, but it really hit home to me how important this is, this part right here, if I can help you with join my business, and you've got to ask that. I was buying a car for my daughter the other day, a new car, and I went in there, and I knew what I wanted to pay. I didn't want to pay over a certain amount, right? I mean, she didn't really need a new car. I was just going to get her a new car because I wanted her to be safe, you know, and she drives from Santa Stanford to home often during the year, and I don't want it to break down, right? So I, I, I wanted her to have a new car, okay? So I, I go there, and they go, okay, Mr. Lamarck, um, you know, we, I picked out the car. We picked out what we wanted, the color and all that, and we sat down, and, I, and he said, what do you want to pay? And I say, well, I want to pay 20000 And he says, what do you want your monthly payments to be? I said, I don't want it to be uh, over $250 a month, okay, where I want it to be. I, I, and, and he says, because um, I'm leasing this. I lease it through my business. That's one of the f good things about owning a business because I get to write the whole thing off, okay? She's an employee, too. She does work for me. Okay? She does do work for me, okay? So it's a, it's a benefit. Um, so not for all my employees, but anyways, for some of them. <laughs> anyways, so we are, we're, we're going through this, and he says, okay. And it's like they have this thing like this, right? And then they have a place for you. He says, so, Mr. Lamarck, if I can get you the, this price, this payment, uh, will you take the car today? And, and I said, yes. And he says, okay, can I have your approval right here? And I put my name there, right? As soon as I do that, what, what, what do I own? I own that car if he can come back with that, those numbers, right? So he comes back, and it's 23 grand, and it's 325, right? And I go, no, 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 you didn't hear me. I don't need this car, and I don't need the aggravation. I want this and this. If you can't do this, I'm walking. So go talk to your closer guy and come back with that price. Okay? And so he goes back and he comes back with my price. And I walk out with the car. So then he comes back and he says, Okay, I don't think I can do this, but I'm gonna try to talk. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to talk him into it. I'm gonna try to talk him into it. Okay, if I can talk him in, are you sure you'll take it today? I said, absolutely no problem. I own a car. But you know why they do that? I'll tell you why they do that. So they, the first day, they want to know if you're live or not. They don't want to waste their time dealing with somebody that's not doesn't have the ability to, to make a damn decision, okay? And they get a commitment. They know up front. And you need to do exactly the same thing. You need to say, Lynn, if I can help you get there in five to 15 years instead of 20 to 40, if I can help you make 10 grand a month instead of the 4,000 you make right now, will you join me in my business? Will you give me your time and energy? Because if I'm going to give them that five to 15 years and his income, you owe me your time and energy. That's my payback for me giving you what you want. You with me? That's how you recruit somebody. If you can give them what they want, then you should never be shy about asking for what you want. And that's the key to recruiting somebody right there. It's not like, oh, it's a $700 billion company and blah, 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 and all the things you think it is. You think it's about that. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your ability to ask the tough question. Will you do this if I can do this for you? Now, you don't. I deserve that if, he, if I can do it for him, right? And so do you. So that's the key. Now, where did I get that little thing from this book called The Cashflow Quadrant? This is a book written by Robert Kiyosaki with Sharon Lecter. I, I spoke to Robert and Sharon for almost an hour on the telephone on Thursday. They are so excited about building a relationship with us in PFS, I can't even tell you. They are beside themselves about doing stuff with us. We're gonna, I'm going to sit down with Sharon next Friday. Oh, not sorry, uh, two weeks from, from yesterday, the 10th. And I'm going to meet with Sharon because uh, Robert's not going to be there. And we're going to start detailing a plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on getting him to write a book that's kind of geared more towards us, customized, written from his perspective on this, okay? I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna get them to. I'm gonna get them to start speaking at our events and stuff like that, and sharing this information and stuff like that. Okay, like we I did with with uh, with uh, uh, Tom Hopkins. Okay, they're very excited. 
He's, he, do you realize he didn't even know who PFS was? He didn't know who we were. He didn't know what we did. He had no idea. He, was so, he goes, I can't believe there's a company out there. This, because he's, he considered himself a teacher. He goes, I can't believe there's a company out there teaching these principles. He gave me three recruiting leads on the phone on Thursday. Of guys that he knows that are in the business that want to talk to me that he's already talked to. Okay? He says, well, I get re- I, he goes, I get people calling me all the time. I haven't done, known where to send them. Hey, you know what? We're both going to win because gonna, we're going to sell a bunch of books. You know why? I, I recommend this because it's a phenomenal book. That little thing right there has caused our business to explode already. I'm telling you right now. The people that have actually used it, most of you don't use it and haven't used it and probably won't use it. Okay, well, God bless you, all right? But a few of you have a clue. One of the reasons why it works is because it's a way now to explain to people what you do. And it's a way to get a commitment. Most of you have been telling me, oh, I'm in financial asset management and we help people get what they want. And What the hell does that mean, okay? Tell them exactly what we do specifically. Okay, and then get a commitment. Even when you do tell them what you do, you never get a commitment for them to, to get an appointment. You're telling people, but you never get a commitment. The, the reason that works because it's a simple way to transfer information and get a commitment, which is the most important thing you're going to get. When you do this, you're not going to recruit them all right then. It's going to start the recruiting process. What this is going to do is give you an opportunity to sit down with them and close them, really close them. I, I understand there's no quick fix that's going to automatically do anything. I'm not that naive, okay? But this will get you in the door. This will get you to start the process. The more of these that you share with people, the more things are going to happen. This business is a business of prospecting. The people that see the most people do the best, period, end of story. If you're not doing well right now, you show me your, 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 your uh, um, day timer, whatever, your planner, your Franklin planner, That'll be the reason you're not doing well. It'll tell the whole story because I guarantee you there's low activity level. There's terrible follow-up. There's things that aren't happening, okay, that should be happening. So what I want to do is I want to share a couple other things with you because I was talking to somebody out earlier, and they were asking me, you know, I, I'm talking to people, but I'm having a hard time getting them to, you know, you know do something because they're cold, right? I said, well, one of the things you've got to do, and I got after them. I said, where's your, where's your, your day timer at? And he said, Oh, uh, it, it, it's in the car. I said, what the hell is it doing in the car? What good is it going to do in the car? Okay? If you meet somebody, right, you should have your day timer with you. Number one, you should have a bunch of these rules of 72s in your day timer so you can pull them out as soon as you talk to somebody. Number two, if I meet Dave Simpkins, right, and, 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 he, and we talk, start talking, unless I, I do the, this little thing here, I want to be able to immediately write down Dave's name address in my, my, in my day timer, and I'm going to, let's say it's today, Saturday, I'm going to put together a little note saying, thank you very much for the time we spent. I'm going to send that out to him on Monday, and I'm going to send it with a little bit of information, maybe a brochure or something. And then I'm going to, and he's going to get it on Tuesday, and then on Thursday or Friday, I'm going to have it written in my day timer, call Dave Simpkins to follow up on what you sent him on Thursday. So Thursday, I'm, I, I, look, I get up I, in the morning, and I look at my day timer. Oh, I got to call Dave. I call Dave. I say, Dave. How you doing, Dave? Did you get that thing I sent you in the mail? And Dave says, yes. Oh, fantastic. Did you enjoy reading it? Did it make sense to you? Oh, wonderful. The reason I'm calling you is I was just wondering if there was a time we could get together so I could follow up with you and, and share some incredible information that could be very helpful to you or anything, right? Just talk to him. And if he says, well, I'm really busy right now. Great. Would you mind if I followed up in a week or two? No problem. And then I put down in my day timer two weeks from today to call him and put his name and number in there. And then that day comes on, I call him. Hey, today's the, hey, Dave, you told me to call you two days. Today's the two weeks later. I'm calling the follow-up. How are you doing? Fantastic. Things are going great. Hey, listen, I just read this article in Newsweek about long-term health care. It's unbelievable. It endorses our company, essentially, and that's the future of our business. I'd like to share some information about that with you. What am I doing? I'm starting the recruiting process. I'm developing a relationship with them. Now, I, Dave's not the only guy I'm doing this with. I got 20, 30, 40 people I'm doing this with simultaneously. I know I'm not going to recruit them all at the same time. I know I'm going to recruit two this month, three next month, three the next month, three the fourth. But I have so many people I'm working on simultaneously that I'm farming that boot two, three, four every month. I can't probably handle a lot more than that because I'm going to be working like crazy training these people. Most of you don't have a day timer. You don't even follow up. 
And you're going, I don't understand. Or somebody says you, for you to call them and you didn't write it down. You forget to call them. Now your credibility's trashed, right? They, they think you're afraid because you said you're going to call them, but you forgot to write it down. And you, you've got so many things going on in your life. You've got a job. You've got this part-time business. You've got issues with your family. You can't remember all that stuff. You have to write every single thing down. And then you, and you stay on top of it every day. That makes you look like a doggone genius, like a professional. If you don't have a day timer and a planner, you're not following every single day. There's no way you're going to be successful, guys. I was fanatical about that. Totally. Especially the worst thing could happen. You have a new recruit and you tell the recruit you're going to do something and you forget to write it down. You forget it. And you said you were going to call them or do something. You don't do it. Now they think you don't care about them. They think that if they ask you to do something, you're a flake. So now your credibility in their eyes goes down and you wonder why you can't get them to do anything. See what I'm talking about? Real simple little things that make the difference in you being successful or not being successful. Okay? Little things. See, the, the thing is that people are watching you. They're looking at your focus. They're looking at your intensity. One thing, you may not like the way I talk. You might like, not like the things I say. But I, you know exactly where I stand, right? You know exactly I'm passionate about what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 16 years. I am I'm wealthy right now. I'm not just, just okay, okay? I'm, I'm doing well, but I am more excited and more passionate about the future than I've ever been in my life. This is a window of opportunity for those of you that have half a brain. You can just see, look at the stuff that George went over. You guys should be thinking about making a million and two and three million dollars a year and, and just getting, I mean, just accomplishing everything you ever thought about in your life right now. You're in that place in your life, but you can't do it with the half butted effort and you can't do it when you're, you know, you're worried about what people think and you can't do it if you're not together and you're not on it, you're not focused. Just a few years. Folks, you know what the best part of making it is? The best part for me, because I love my, I was, I, I was with Woody, where's Woody Mott at? I was with Woody Mott, I spent a little time with Woody Mott the other day. I said, you know, I love what I do, man. Because you know why? I, I make enough money now, I hire people to handle all the stuff that I'm not good at. I like I follow up and, and, and I mean, I'm the details and all that. I'm a, I'm a creative guy, right? I hired Rob, who's unbelievable. He's helped me so much. I've got, you know, uh, uh, I just hired Doug to handle the compliance thing for me. I've, I hire people that handle the stuff that has to get done, but I'm not good at and I don't like doing. I get to only do the stuff I like to do. This is what I like to do. What I'm doing right now is what I like doing this. I like doing my odd meeting. I like training. I like calling people on the phone and helping them. I love doing that. That's a piece of cake, right? That's the best part of being, being doing well here is you don't have to do all that stuff anymore. Like all this, just think all the stuff you don't like about the business, right? There's, I know there's stuff you don't like. Well, go make some doggone money, hire somebody to do it for you and do the stuff you like, right? It's great. Then enjoy the heck out of it. It's just a whole process. It's just fun. It's fun seeing people start to see like a, you know, like a Daniel Alonzo or George Verdugo or Dennis Lang or, a, you know, some of you guys that are starting to do well. It's really exciting. It's really exciting. So take this stuff, master it. And George called me with, with a couple of things I just want to share on the phone. And I, and I, was, I wanted to put it on tape, so I didn't call him back. But he said, what, is the, what do you say when you call a referral? You know, if I call a referral, I, I want you to really think about recruiting. So I'm going to gear it towards recruiting, okay? This is also the same thing that you would ask when you ask people for help. Let's say I ask, I call somebody out up, and I call Dave Simpkins, right? And I call Dave. Let me have, give Dave a, we can't do this, Simon. We can't do this. Okay, well, forget it. Let me turn this one off, and I'll use the. I can do this and pass it back and forth. Right? So I call Dave up, and I say, Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave's a friend of mine. Okay. This is how I built my business. So anybody interested in knowing how I built my business? All right. Okay. This is how Hector Lamarck built his business. I did not cold call. I never did it. Sorry to tell you that. I didn't do it. All right. I didn't do seminars. I didn't do go see businesses. I never did any of that. All right. Now, I'm not saying not to do that. I'm just telling you, I never did that. This is what I did. 
I call up, Dave's a friend of mine, Dave's my brother, Dave's my neighbor, Dave's my coworker, Dave's, it doesn't matter, it works the same regardless, okay? I call Dave up, this is what I used to do. I say, hey Dave, how you doing, Dave? All right, who's this? It's Hector. Hey Hector, how you doing? I'm doing great, hey Dave, listen, the reason I'm calling is, uh, God, I'm so busy, I'm dizzy, man. I can't hardly keep up with things right now. And I'm, you know, I have my own business and I'm getting that thing going right now. And I just, I mean, it's going crazy right now. It's so busy right now. I need help. Could you, could you help me out? Yeah, sure. What do you want me to do? Well, what I need, Dave, is I'm looking for two kinds of people. I need some help in my business. I'm looking for somebody, either one, that wants to make somewhere between 1000 or $3,000 a month part-time, you know, wants to work a little part-time, I'll teach you my business. Or two, I'm looking for somebody that's kind of dissatisfied with the current profession, and they've always dreamed of making $100,000 a year or more, but really don't see there any way of doing that where they're currently at. So I'm looking for one of those two kinds of people that I can just, you know, pop by and share some information with them. The reason I'm asking you, Dave, is because I could run an ad the paper, but it's, it's impersonal. You don't know who you're going to get, and, and I know the, if you refer me to somebody, they're going to have credibility. You're going to be a person of character, and I won't waste my time, and I know I'm dealing in a good market with good people. Who do you know? That could that, that that I could just pop some information by that might be interested. Who are the couple, two or three sharpest people you know? Oh, I know uh, Lynn Massey. Uh, let's see, uh, Joe Blake would probably be good for you. Um, got a friend named Chris. Yeah, I know kind of. Okay, well, I'll tell you, two or three is good to start with because I don't have time to call that many people anyway. So, uh, just give me those names. Who are their names? Their numbers, and I get the information. He gives me their name and number, and then I call them up. So I call up Lynn Massey, right? And I call up Lynn, and I say. Hi, my, hi, hi, Lynn. This is Hector Lamarck. Is this Lynn Massey? Yes, it is. Hey, Lynn, we have a mutual friend in Dave Simpkins. You know Dave, right? Yeah, Dave's a friend of mine. Okay, well, Dave, I, I was talking to Dave, and I was telling him, Lynn, I am so busy. I'm in the financial service business. I have my own business. My business is going crazy right now. We're so busy. There's so many people to see, not enough time to see them all. And I told him I needed some help. I'm, I'm essentially, I'm looking for two kinds of people, Lynn. And let me just real quickly explain what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that wants to either make $1,000 to $3,000 a month on a part-time basis or somebody that's just, that would love to make $100,000 a year but doesn't really have that opportunity in the current, their current business that they're in right now. Uh, and, he, and I said, who are the two sharpest people he knows? And you were the first person he mentioned. And the reason I'm calling you is I want to pop some information by whether you're interested or not. It's not really important. I just want to pop it by. You can take a look at it. Once you take a look at it, you can tell me if there's any interest or not. Um, when can I pop by and give you that information? Uh, could you mail it to me? I could mail it to you, but I'd rather meet you because, see, I, I, the re I told Dave that I could run, I was, I could run a, an ad the paper, but, but I'd rather you know, um, meet some people that people know that have credibility, that I don't have to, that can vouch for their integrity. And, that, and the reason is I, I really like to meet you. I, I hope you don't mind. Just, it, it'll just take a few minutes, you know, five, ten minutes, and then you know, if you see some interest there, then we can move forward. If not, no problem, okay? Okay. So what's a good day for you? Do you? Can you get free for lunch or something like that? Or, or can I pop by your work or right after work? Uh, you, I, I really like to do it during the day if possible. Can we do that? Early afternoons would be better. Like about 4 o'clock? Does that work for you? Yeah, 4 o'clock. Okay, great. Where can I meet you at? Why don't you meet me at my school? Your school, fantastic. I'll pop by. Uh, uh, is this uh, Tuesday good at 4 o'clock at your school? Could I do that? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So then I'm going to pop by, and I'm going to go meet him. Okay, and I'm going to take some information. Now I start the process. And then what is going to happen is what am I going to do? Cash flow quadrant, right? Because right away I'm going to find out if he wants to own a business or he just wants an F&A. Either way, either I'm going to get his business through an F&A or I'm going to recruit him and get his business plus make him an agent. You with me? I'm going to do both. But now I've got an appointment. I've got a person to see. Now, even if he's not interested, I'm going to do the same thing with him. I'm going to get a couple of names. See, what happens in, I'm never in a cold, cold market. I'm always in a somewhat warm market, someone's warm market. And if, if I have credibility, I'm going to get them to like me and trust me and all that. And I'm going to see people that people are going to refer me to rather than knocking on doors and going in malls and all that, which is fine. You can do that. But it's much easier. Listen, if you would go home today, or before you go home, you would put together a list of all the people you know, every brother, every sister, every uncle, every friend, every coworker, every former worker, every person you went to high school, college with, every, a list of everyone, and then just made a call like that. I'm telling you, you would get so many people to see, you wouldn't even be able to see them all. You would. You know you would. Because what am I asking for? I'm asking 
for anything directly. If you were due to do that, you would be, and you'll never get rejected. They don't reject you. They won't reject you. You can call your client base. Some of you have big client bases. You don't even call them. You don't even talk to these people. They like you. They did business with you. They would give you referrals all day long if you called them, right? And it doesn't take hardly any time. It's a couple of minutes. Right away, you can cut to the chase. That's how I did it. And I was always getting names and numbers, and I, it, was, it was easy. But what ends up happening, you start doing this, and before you know it, you're recruiting three or four or five or six people, and you're recruiting people in your field training. Now you're in the field with them, and you're recruiting people for them in the field. Now you can't even make those calls anymore. I couldn't even make the calls anymore because now I was training five or six guys at the same time, and I was recruiting people for them, and I couldn't call the people that I had this list of. And that's how you do it. It's a piece of cake. It's not that hard, and any one of you could do that in a heartbeat if you wanted to. My name's Hector Lamarck, and I'm going to be talking to you about one of the things that when, I'm, when I show people our business or when I'm talking to people, one of the most common questions that's asked of me is, um, what do you do? You know, and so what I'm going to do to start out this evening is talk to you about what we do, what, what our company's about. First of all, I want to start with the uh, uh, a concept called the rule of 72. This concept's really important that you, that you understand this. If you're going to be uh, investing money or you know, thinking about retiring or thinking about sending your children to, to a college, the same for, the, for, for their college education and those sorts of things, this rule is really critical that you understand how it works. Now, uh, the rule of 72 is real simple. If you take 72 divided by your rate of return, in this instance, let's say your return is 6%, what that equals is your investment doubling period. So we'll, we'll, I'll explain what that means here. At 10%, a $10,000 one-time investment at 6%, 6 into 72 goes how many times? 12, right? It goes 12 times. That's exactly how it goes. So what happens then at 6%, that $10,000 is going to double every 12 years. So then in 12 years, the $10,000 investments could grow to $20,000. And in 12 more years or 24 years, $40,000. And in 12 more years or 36 years, 80,000. So if you have a $10,000 investment, that's what it grows to. It's really that simple. Um, if you took the same $10,000 and you got a 12% return now, let's say you were at, at uh, Bank of America on one corner and across the way at the other corner is Primerica Financial Services, okay? And let's say that, that if you walked over there, we, we were able to put that in, in some sort of an investment, say a mutual fund. Historically, uh, the, av the co average common stock mutual fund over the last 20 years has been approaching 14%. It's about 14% average rate of return. Now, that's no guarantee of the future, but that's what it's done. So let's say you're able to get 12%, okay? So 6 into 70, Q2 goes 6 times, right? Goes 6 times. So then now we know our same $10,000, instead of doubling every 12 years, is going to double every 6 years, okay? So it's 20000 in 6, it's 40000 in 12. It's 80,000 in 18 years. It's 160,000 in 24 years. It's 320,000 in 30 years. And it's 640,000 in 36 years. Same period of time. The difference between is, is 80 to 640,000. How much does that difference work out to be in dollars then? $560,000. It's a $560,000 difference, right? So let me ask the question, is that a big difference or a little difference? It's a huge difference, right? It's a gigantic difference. So that's one of the things we do. We show people how to move their money from low-yielding uh, investments into higher-yielding, potentially higher-yielding investments. And so the question we, I ask you tonight, if we could help you increase your rate of return on the, on the money that you're investing, would you allow me to help you maximize your investment return? Yes, of course. That's what everybody tells me. If I ask them that question, it's automatic yes. And even if they're already investing money somewhere, well, I'll, what I'll say is I'll say, look, if you're investing somewhere else right now and you're happy with that return, how about if we do a comparison? Let's, you know, just like you would get a second opinion from a doctor, right? Why don't you get a second opinion from me? Let me show you what I can do. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, if you're happier with what you have, then you'll at least know that what you're doing works, right? I mean, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain and put your mind at ease. So that's, one, that's the first thing we do. The second thing we do, is uh, we teach people the secret to financial freedom. That's one of the things that we do. That's one of the things I'm most excited about. And let me explain what I mean there. This is really critical. How many of you are interested in becoming financially free? Okay, well, everybody is, right? Uh, if you didn't have to work, it'd be great, right? Now, let's take a look. 
What we knew first needed is we need to identify where, where do people earn their cash from? Like you make money every month, right? Where do you make that from? Everybody makes money from some place. One of four places, either you're an employee, you have a job, and your income is based on a position and not the person. That's one of the challenges with being an employee. For example, if you were a school teacher and you were a phenomenal school teacher, really conscientious, went out of your way to help people, you did everything you can to, to, to do a great job, and then next to you, you have another teacher that really just kind of shows up, they're at the last minute, doesn't really prepare, doesn't really care, does a very minimum to collect their paycheck. Let's say that you have the same amount of time, tenure at your school, and you have the same educational background. You're going to make the same amount of money, even though you may be a much better teacher and a much more committed teacher. And the reason for that is that the position gets paid and not the person. It's the same thing. You could be a mail carrier. You know, you could be the best mail carrier on earth, and you could have another mail carrier that's a total slacker. It pays the position. That's one of the challenges with the job. Now, the other place people make money is being self-employed. Now, these people, they own a job. They're people like dentists, doctors, lawyers, hairstylists, real estate agents, salespeople, and the list goes on and on. But the, but the thing about somebody that's self-employed that's, that's kind of exciting is that even though, let's say that they're a real estate agent, for example, you could have one real estate agent that makes a half a million dollars a year, another real estate agent that makes $25,000 a year, right? And the reason for that is because it pays the person and not necessarily the position because one real estate agent must, might be totally fantastic, totally on it, really conscious, knows the business in and out, and the other one doesn't return phone calls, doesn't follow up, doesn't do what they need to do so they don't make a lot of money, right? So the beauty of being self-employed is that your, your income is based on what you do as opposed to the position. So it's, it's, a, it's a better situation. The challenge with being self-employed, though, one of, the, one of the, the, the challenges is that if you don't work, if this real estate agent, even though they're great, takes the month off, they don't make any money, right? There's no cash flow coming in. That's a real problem with being self-employed. You can never, you never have any freedom, right? And the other place people, people make money is through owning a business, through a business. Uh, and those are all kinds of business. Could be manufacturing, marketing, you name it, okay? But the thing about a business is uh, this person that makes money there, they own a system. They have others working for them. It could be 10 people. It could be 10,000 people. Take, for example, Bill Gates, who, who started Microsoft. He started with he and Paul Allen, and they built the company. Now he has thousands of employees, right? And he doesn't just make money based on his own efforts. He makes money based on the efforts of his thousands of employees that do work, right? As a result, he's become very, very wealthy. So, so what happens there, because you own a system, you can have unlimited income potential because you can make money based on the efforts of literally thousands of people if you choose to, as opposed to just yourself, which is how you do it in a job or if you're self-employed. So there's really unlimited, and plus there's more freedom. Do you think Bill Gates does all the work today? No, he doesn't hardly do any of the work. He does all the strategy. He does the planning. He sets the direction of the company. But he doesn't personally do the work. He has people doing the work for him, right? So that allows him to have more freedom, maybe more time with his family and that sort of thing, okay? So that's a great way. But what's important about a business is the system. The system's the most critical part of any business. Let me give you an example. How many of you think you could make a better hamburger than McDonald's? Anybody think they can make a better hamburger? And when I ask people that, everybody says, absolutely. I can make a better tasting hamburger, better, you know, you can go anywhere. in and out makes a much better hamburger than McDonald's. Would you agree with that? Okay. But you know what? in and outs not that big. It, they, they, in comparison to McDonald's, they might have a few hundred stores. McDonald's has like 28,000 stores, okay? McDonald's is the number one restaurant in the whole world. They sell more food than any other restaurant in the entire world. They're everywhere, okay? Why? Because they have great food? No, because they have a great system. Their food is not only not, doesn't taste that good, it's not even good for you, except they sell a ton of it, right? Okay? They're marketing geniuses and they have a tremendous system. Their system in fact, it's so good, it's run by teenagers. Have you noticed that? When you go into McDonald's, who's there? A bunch of teenagers running that place, right? There's teenagers running multi-million dollar businesses. Literally, that's how good the system is. So, so when somebody puts the, puts, gives McDonald's Corporation a million dollars for a franchise, they're not giving a million dollars and saying, oh, I can't wait to uh, you know, flip some hamburger patties and fry some French fries. That's not what they're thinking about, right? They're thinking about, I'm buying a cash flow system. I'm buying a money, a money machine, basically. They're buying the system. They're not buying the, the, the product or the chance to even sell or make the products, okay? So it's important when you're looking at a business, look at the system. And then, uh, so would you agree that the system's the most important part of the business? 
Absolutely, there's no question about that. And then the other place that people make money is as an investor. These people have money working for them. Matter of fact, they have enough money set aside. Let's say that you're an investor and you have $2 million invested and you got a 10% return. That would give you $200,000 a year in income, right? You could, you could live well on, on, on $16,000 a month, right? And so, so becoming an investor is the way to go. So the, they enjoy complete freedom because if you had $2 million and was giving you $200,000 a year, you could travel to Europe, you could do things, you could take a month off and go stay at the beach, you could do whatever you wanted to do and still know that you have income coming in to take care of your life, right? That would be the best of all worlds. They live, in fact, the dream. Those people are, the, 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 I, I think, the envy of the world, right? So if these four ways, employee, self-employed, business, and investor, you need to figure out where do you, how do you make your cash flow? And then the next question is, I, I want to ask you tonight, is of the four places, what, where, where would you rather earn your cash flow? Investor, right? When I ask people this, if I asked 100 people, every single person says investor every single time. So this gets to the point of what do we do, okay? What we do is we help people become investors. That's what we do. Let me show you how we do that. One way that you can become an investor is you can become a client of ours. You can allow us to, help, to do a financial needs analysis for you. In that financial needs analysis, what we'll do is we'll put together a debt elimination strategy. That's really important because most people aren't saving a lot of money because they have too much debt. They have car loans, credit cards, furniture payments, et cetera, et cetera. And because they have so much debt, they're not able to save as much money. So one, the first thing we do is we show you how to get rid of your debt. The second thing we do is we put together an investment strategy for you to allow you to uh, get to become an investor as quickly as possible so that you can invest properly based on your particular investment needs and, and, and wants and desires and, and your, you know, your, whatever you feel comfortable with. So doing it that way, it takes usually about 25 to 30 years, somewhere maybe 20 to 30 years, somewhere in that range, okay, to get a little while, but we can get you there. And matter of fact, most people do it that way. Another way, and I think the most exciting way and why you're here and why I'm talking to you tonight, is you can become self-employed with us. You can become a, prime, a, a personal financial analyst with, with Primerica Financial Services. What we'll do at that point, we'll start teaching you our system, okay? And we'll, we have a system. We have a phenomenal system. Our system is so incredible. If you look at these pictures on the back wall right here, or in our, in our we have a book called the $100,000 Club book. These are all people that... Um, that in, it used our system. These people, average cash flow on the back wall there is about $250,000 a year, okay? So what, if you're making $250,000 a year and you're used to making 50 now before, right? You have excess cash every month, right? Excess cash every year. So what you do is you take the excess cash and you start investing that. If you lived on say, even 100,000 of it and you paid 50,000 in taxes, you could invest 100,000, you could become an investor relatively quickly, right? Instead of it taking you 25 to 50 years, it might take you five to 15 years. Personally, it took me five years. I started part-time in doing what you're gonna look at tonight. You haven't really seen the details. We're gonna show you the details. I started doing Primerica Financial Services in 1984. In 1984, I made $18,000. In 1985, I made $36,000. In 1986, I made $86,000. And in 1987, I made $409,000. And then in 1988, I made $855,000 doing what you're going to see tonight. So by the end of my fifth year, I had saved most of that money because I was living in a $1,200 a month house payment. That's what I had. I had a $200 a month car payment. I had a very low overhead. And I, and I, was, I only needed about $5,000 a month to live on. And I, was, and I made a lot of money. And, I, and I, what I did is I invested all that difference. So at the end of my fifth year, I had saved enough money that I, that I had enough money invested that I was at 10% was making close to $100,000 a year. So I was financially dependent five years. Now that's not normal, but I know you could do it in five. It might take you 15. If I could show you how to get there in, instead of 25 to 30 years, five to 15 years, how many of you would rather do it in five to 15 years? Like everybody, right? Okay, so then what you need to do in order to do that is simply this. If I can help you to become an investor more quickly, would you join our business? Yes, of course, why not? What else, do, what other options do you have, All right? You might as well join our business. If you join our business, what we'll do is all you, you, they'll talk to you about what you need to do. One of the things you're gonna need to do is, is, put, is get a, a, an independent business application put together. 
You invest uh, $199 in your, in your um, business application. That's to start your business. And you could recoup that probably in your first month. And you'd be in, in, a, in a positive cash flow system probably within 30 to 60 days at, at, at the outside. So there's really very, very little risk. Actually, if you, if you work at it, there's no risk. So it's a pretty exciting situation. And we have a system that absolutely is the premier system in the industry. As a matter of fact, if you look at any financial service system, Primerica Financial Services has the absolute best system there is. It really does. And, and all you've got to do is take a look at some of the other systems that are out there. You take a look at Merrill Lynch, uh, Prudential, uh, IDS through American Service. I don't care. You look at any of them. They don't hold a candle to our system. Our system is unbelievable. And it allows someone like you an opportunity to own their own financial service. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to uh, do a little bit of recognition, and then we're going to show you the rest of what we do. And then if you have any questions, you get together with the person that brought you, and we'll tell you all the rest of what you need to do to get your business started. So without any further ado, I'm going to do a little recognition.